Disclaimer, I am not a medical health professional. The content in this series is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health issues, please seek the guidance of a qualified mental health professional. Your mental well-being is important, and they can provide the appropriate support and expertise needed. Always consult with a licensed healthcare provider before making any decisions regarding your mental health. The information provided in this series is intended to raise awareness and promote understanding of mental health issues and create a deeper relationship with God, but should not be considered a replacement for professional care. Welcome to Only Fulfillment, a place where we dive deep into the timeless wisdom and spiritual guidance found in the Word of God. If you are seeking inspiration, faith, and a closer connection to your Christian beliefs, you've come to the right place. Our mission is to fulfill your heart and soul with the transformative power of God's Word. Join us on this journey of faith, exploration, and growth as we discover the treasures within the pages of the Bible. Together, we'll find strength, hope, and the guidance you need for your walk of faith. Before we dive into today's content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Liking this video and leaving your thoughts in the comments not only supports this channel, but also helps spread the message of faith. Your engagement tells YouTube that this content is valuable and meaningful to you, allowing us to reach even more people searching for spiritual guidance. So let's grow this community of faith together and inspire others on this spiritual journey. Subscribe, like, and comment to be part of this positive impact. God's plan for the painful emotions. Let's read John 16 verses 20 to 24. Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that, her, that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. This passage offers great hope to anyone going through physical or psychological pain. Here are a few things that can be learned from this text. Number one. The world seems to be full of joy. Often the believer looks around and is reminded of the unfairness of life. Wicked people seem to enjoy themselves while many committed to God are in pain. But Jesus assures us that this will not go on forever. Besides, appearances often are deceiving. We naturally tend to view others as being happier and more successful than we are. Number two, grief, sorrow, and anguish will turn to joy. This is the core of Jesus' promise. Believers must treasure the idea that sorrow will not only pass away, but give way to joy. Number three, past pain will be forgotten. Memories of the unpleasant past often cause much distress. Many psychotherapists work painstakingly to remove the effects of pain from the past from their client's present life. Jesus assures us that just as a woman gives birth and forgets the pains at the sight of the newborn, his followers will one day move beyond the pain of the past. Number four, no one will take away our joy. The type of joy Jesus offers 
is not the same as we now understand it. Jesus is offering us total happiness, an eternal condition that no enemy can take away from the saved. And lastly, there will be no need. Jesus affirms that the righteous will no longer ask anything. They will not need to make requests and supplications to Jesus because all their needs will have been met. How can you hold on fast to the promise that your sorrow will turn to joy? How can this assurance help you pass through the adversities of life? How could you use Jesus' promises to encourage someone in grief?